Thank you everyone for joining today's webinar, A Day in the Life of Cardiac CT, How Advances in Technologies Have Enhanced the Experiences of the Patient, Technologist and Physician. My name is Olivia Egan and I'm the Director of CT Product Marketing at Siemens Health and Ears. I'm delighted and have the honour to introduce today's fantastic speaker, Nikki Weber. Nikki is the Lead Technologist of the CT Clinical Innovation Centre at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Nikki is a member of the SECT and serves on several committees, including the Membership Committee, the 2023 SECT Annual Scientific um, Meeting Program Committee, and serves as the Chair of the Technologist and Nurse Education Committee. Nikki has been a CT technologist for over 20 years and has expertise in all areas of CT and has also worked in the 3D lab. Nikki, thank you, and I'll hand it over to you. Well, thank you, Liv, for that wonderful and kind introduction. I have no disclosures. I've worked on Siemens CT scanners for over 15 years. Well, I'll, I'll be honest, it's been 20 years. My initial introduction to Samaris 10 was on the Naotome Alpha Photon Counting Detector Scanner, so I had a lot to take in, new software and hardware. I was grateful to have some familiar features and excited to explore the new ones. Ultimately, our goal was to provide high quality images for the radiologist to interpret while still providing the same quality care to our patients. We were able to attain that goal and surpass it. We are still learning this software, figuring out new ways to gain efficiencies and maintain consistency across our practice. Samaris 10 still offers the same information we are used to seeing in Samaris 7 plus more. The plus more is what we'll talk about today. One thing we want to do is emphasize how the features of the Samaris 10 software enhance the experience for patients, technologists, and physicians. It also offers opportunities to change workflows in a positive way when performing cardiovascular CT exams. We will also learn about best practices in patient preparation, protocol optimization, protocol selection, and post-scan reconstructions. When using the Samaris 7 software, I got used to the look and feel of it. We here at Mayo learned the ins and outs of it from scanner model to scanner model and how to use it in every division. We have used it for years and it's not going away anytime soon. For those of you on this webinar tonight that might not be familiar with it, I'll show you what it looks like for reference. This is the main screen called the patient model dialog box. Here, the technologist sees the patient position choices, picks the protocol from the body region model or the separate folder. And the bottom left is called the chronicle and the tabs on the right are for the scan and recon parameters. You can also see the patient's ECG tracing on the trigger card. And just as a reminder, my exposure to this software has been from the Natome Alpha Photon Counting Detector Scanner, so some features may not be available for all Samaris 10 users. And now, the Samaris 10 user interface. While the look is different, there are a lot of things very familiar to any user. It, it also has similarities to Singovia. So if you're already familiar with Singovia, your transition to some features in Samaris 10 will be easier. And vice versa, once you get familiar with Samaris 10, your ability to navigate Singovia will also be easier. Here you can see the protocol browser, the same familiar body regions for adult and child, separated vascular and non-vascular region models. There are also customizable folders on the left. The protocols are listed on the right. The protocols include an area for the descriptions or notes, available scan modes, and a selectable topogram. The protocol description area has been useful in our practice for technologists learning the new scanner and its protocols. As we optimize our protocols, we needed as many ways to communicate the changes as possible. Once the protocol has been chosen, the user again sees a chronicle patient position the patient's ECG trace and scan and recon areas. The area along the bottom of the screen is called the timeline. 
users can see the order of acquisition and cumulative timing for each series. We all have been in the situation where the exam protocol doesn't fit that nice, neat box. We are able to combine and rearrange series easily. Check twice and scan once was one of my SCCT colleagues recently said. The reconstruction area is on the right. We'll discuss this in greater detail later in the presentation. As I said before, many things are the same, but might have a slightly different look or location. The ECG signal strength bars and quality of bonding or connectivity notifications are still the same. This is giving a better explanation of the meaning of the colors used on the human torso to show users if they should take action to fix a lead or not. This could be due to poor placement or just poor connectivity from the patient's chest hair, oils, lotions, or dry skin. This information is helpful for users that may not be familiar with cardiac scanning, such as those just starting a cardiac practice. The next feature that we have found to be quite useful on both software is the fast 3D camera. Multiple techs have said that they miss the functionality when on scanners that don't have the camera available. We know it's a luxury, but helpful to those regardless of the amount of experience they have. The application benefits all parties involved due to the consistent centering of one exam type between different technologists and for patients that are returning for another exam. Inconsistent centering of the patient can lead to inaccurate radiation dosing. If the patient is too high or low in the gantry, the topogram makes the patient seem smaller or larger and they are and smaller or larger than they really are, and this may lead to a suboptimal dose. Centering the patient consistently keeps the image quality similar, which helps the radiologists when they read the exam. And of course, accuracy of the image allows the radiologist to convey information to the ordering clinicians confidently. The control box now has the option to turn the laser light on from inside the control room. All other movements and emergency buttons are available too. This helps techs that are asked to scan on both types of software and maintain patient safety in both areas. This is just a quick little summary of um, looking at the, what's the same and different. In my experience, a technologist is consistently adapting to new or different applications in the work areas, scanners, patients, protocols, et cetera. It's what we do and we do it well. So whether the software or hardware items are the same or different isn't going to have an impact on your practice. What will is the new features available on Samaris 10 software. The new features are grouped in two different families, the Go family, the Scan and Go, Check and Go, View and Go, Recon and Go, and the My Exam family, My Exam Satellite, My Exam Companion, My Exam Cockpit, and My Exam Compass. Let's see how these features enhance the patient experience and change the workflow used to perform the cardiovascular exam. So patients that are scheduled for a cardiac CT may, be, may start the day anxious and wondering about what the exam is going to be like, checking, rechecking their instructions and setting notifications to make sure that they arrive on time for their exam. They may be irritable because they cannot have their morning ca caffeine or have other restrictions in place. This mounting anticipation can be overwhelming for them at times. It's our job as technologists to ease those tensions and do whatever we can to get the, pace, the best exam possible for the patient. Samaris 10 software features that I feel will benefit the patient most is the Go features, and here's why. Repeatedly, you will hear talks about cardiac exams refer to a basic cardiac workflow like this. It's what we are thinking about for every exam. There's a common theme too. We always want to provide a calming presence at the side of the patient throughout the exam. Scan and Go mobile workflow, as well as other Go families of features, will help us accomplish this. Let me show you what I mean. So here, the Scan and Go workflow starts in the room when we greet the patient and set them up for their exam. The technologist on the left is focused on the patient's needs while moving the scan table using the remote. The technologist on the right is using the mobile tablet to see the patient to set the patient up. 
This interaction between the patient and the technologist can put the patient at ease and lower, help lower their heart rate. Streamlining the flow for the technologist and the patient before the exam can also decrease the amount of time needed per exam and further increase patient comfort. Here's a closer look at how the, to get the exam started from the tablet. The scheduler is the same on the tablet as it is on the scanner console. The technologist can take the tablet to the waiting room for identification if needed, a safety measure that should not be skipped over. There are options to edit the patient details or register a new patient on the tablet. Using the tablet to identify the patient offers a change in workflow by decreasing the amount of paper used for each patient and possible cost savings too. After registering the patient, it's time to pick the protocol. It's not necessary to go back to the tech console to do this. The user can pick any protocol from the tablet, allowing the tech to continue the conversation with the patient, answering questions or giving instructions to the patient. Practicing the breath hold once the patient is on the table and getting ready for their exam can play a key role in the success of a cardiac exam. Often the patient's heart rate changes when the patient holds their breath. This can influence what scan mode is used for a patient's exam. Noting this, Siemens incorporated a way to practice the breath hold at the bedside, both audibly and visually. Not all scanner models are equipped with the visual patient instruction or VPI. The user is able to change the language from the tablet. Patients may seem to be answering the questions for name and date of birth, but once you get in the room, you realize that they really don't understand the language the scanner is set to. So it's really nice to be able to change this at the time instead of having to try to remember when you get back to the console. The breath hold practice also gives the scanner a chance to evaluate for heart rate and heart rate variability. So if your patient is hearing impaired, nervous, or easily distracted, the VPI breath hold instructions can be a useful tool. For those patients that cannot hear the audible instructions well, the VPI will visually show them the breathing instructions. We use this in conjunction with the audio instructions to re-emphasize the breathing instructions. It gives the nervous or easily distracted patients something to focus on. And sometimes it can be helpful to get the patient to focus on the VPI when there are multiple people in the room. The ECG trace shows at the top of the screen. The signal strength, vector, and connectivity icons can be viewed on the tablet too. Here's a close-up view of the ECG signal and connectivity patient model. This feature is actually part of the My Exam Companion and Compass feature. The user is asked a series of questions to help guide the scanner to the correct scan mode, extremity laterality, or appearance of metal in the scan range. These are only a few of the questions used to guide the technologist. There are many other possibilities in the scenario um, in this scenario, the patient is asked to hold their breath. Meanwhile, the scanner is using criteria set up by the protocol admin team to define the heart rate and also its variability. The user is then asked a second question to determine if flash mode should be used or not. These questions can be manually overridden by the technologist if needed due to special circumstances. After the patient has been educated about the exam, the breath hold practiced and the My Exam Compass questions answered, the user can proceed to taking the topogram or topograms. Using the fast 3D camera with a fast topo anatomy assigned, the scanner finds the body part to be examined quite efficiently. The user doesn't have, uh, the user does have the ability to move the scan range manually. The topogram will appear on the tablet for the technologist to view. Still able to be in the room table side with the patient, the technologist can move the bolus tracking scan to the proper location and acquire pre-monitoring image. Another function that can be turned on in a protocol is the auto ROI. This will place the ROI in either the descending aorta or the pulmonary artery. And again, this position can be changed manually when necessary. Another feature we use in our protocols is the fast planning. Using this technology can increase efficiency when setting up acquisitions. 
As you can imagine, having the ability to get scan ranges lined up as close to the anatomy as possible before the user has to manipulate the start and end location can shorten the time between cardiac medication administration and initiating the scan acquisition. Less time on the table means less chance of the patient's heart rate going back up and the need for more cardiac medications. Administering the right amount of IV contrast at the right rate and timing is another critical step for cardiac CTA exams. The tablet workflow will show this information if the scanner is equipped with the ability to communicate with the injector using care contrast and contrast coupling. Once you've acquired the data, using the check and go feature to visualize the scan range and contrast administration quality is a handy way to save steps and yet again, stay at the side of the patient. Users can scroll through the images, change the windowing, hide images, and even check through multiple scan acquisitions. If either the appearance of the IV contrast or the coverage of the scan were inadequate, the user has the ability to repeat the scan range quickly and proceed to the acquisition. If everything checks out, the technologist has the option to start the reconstruction at the ta tablet. This gives the technologist the ability to help the nurse take care of the patient and clean the room before the next patient arrives. More efficiency and standardized workflows influence the entire team and patient's experience in a positive way. If everything checks out, the technologist has the option to start the reconstruction at the tablet. This gives the technologist the ability to help the nurse. As we look over the list of tasks we perform for each and every cardiac exam we do, remember that common theme. At the end of the day, our goal is to create a calm environment in the room during the entire exam for not just one patient, but for all patients. Now we've seen efficiencies gained, safety increased, and the patient's experience enhanced because of the new features of Samaris 10. We have not discussed all of the features yet. Let's see if there are any features that can help the technologist and the physician. The Go family of features offers Scan and Go. Everyone benefits because the patient stays calm, may reduce the amount of cardiac medications needed to lower heart rate, provides the ability of good communication with the patient throughout the exam and offers staffing model changes if you're short staffed, et cetera. Check and go after the acquisition quickly and efficiently look through the images. Options for different planes and MIP or NPR rendering is available. You can change the windowing and repeat the series if needed. The recon and go combines Samaris 7's fast planning, fast phase, and rapid results. Almost all recons, reformats, dual energy post-processing can be generated at the scanner and sent to the physician to read. We can create an SPP or spectral post-processing recon for dual energy post-processing in the view and go or in single via. This increases speed and efficiency. No need for multiple workstations or to worry about transferring from scanner to workstation to PACS. Inline results provides parallel and radial ranges, curved planar reformats, and calcium score, VR models, and lung CAD. The view and go is similar to the look and functionality of single via. Via images perform simple post-processing, transfer images directly from the scanner. And here's a quick look at the view and go screen. While learning the new software, I like that the colors of the chronicle acquisition description, the timeline acquisition, and the recons are all the same color. And for safety reasons, it offers the user a way to ensure that they are comparing the parameters for the same acquisition or reconstruction. Another safety measure that has been implemented is the use of icons consist consistently. The scan icon is the man by the donut and the cube is used for reconstructions. One way Samaris 10 software has increased my efficiency as a lead tech is by implementing the same layout between the exam designer where we create the protocols and the exam protocol parameters tab. They 
they have also used a spreadsheet-like layout, which helps at a glance overall visualization of the parameters. It's also possible to change an entire column, which really increases efficiency when making global changes to the protocol on the fly. Decreasing the number of clicks it takes to get from the beginning of the exam to the end is evident throughout the new features of this software. In the area of protocol choice, the productivity is increased by streamlining the protocol selection process. This will be discussed more in the My Exam Companion feature section. Samaris 10 software keeps safety at the forefront of a user's mind. As we get busier and busier, the exams we are asked to perform get more complicated and the needs of the patient still come first. Having gentle and not so gentle reminders that parameters need to be changed or have changed is necessary. Whether you are performing a reconstruction from the scan console while the exam is still open, or if you reopen the exam to do additional reconstructions, the most important thing I want you to know about is that there are unlimited recons. But we'll get back to that awesome feature in a moment. The layout includes the three orthogonal planes plus the preview series in the lower right. Flexibility to change the order of reconstructions has improved user satisfaction and provides standardized images for the physician to read. Oh, and by the way, did I tell you there's unlimited reconstructions? Whether you're performing a reconstruction from the scan console, um, inline results is a new feature that gives users options for reconstructions and post-processing to gain efficiency from the scan console. In this example, the user can get a calcium score generated automatically, just like on single via. There are options to get a total calcium score or a per vessel score. There are options to pick a database to reference the patient's score against. I feel this could be a great tool when used in practices that do a non-con calcium score before a coronary CTA or other cardiac exam. Imagine if you could acquire the calcium score series, initiate the recon job, go in the room to check on the patient and come back to see the score already done. In a practice that does not stop regardless of the calcium score, the tech can get the patient ready to administer the IV contrast while the images are processing. At our facility, we do not routine, routinely do calcium score imaging prior to a coronary CTA. The images are sent to the 3D lab for processing. But that doesn't mean that we can't gain efficiencies from this particular feature. One less exam the 3D lab has to process or less work for them to do once the exam arrives in their workstation. The radiologist benefits because the images get to their reading workstation faster. Curved planar reformats can be instrumental in looking at the vessel. Again, being produced by the scanner can be a time saver for whomever is creating the series, whether it's techs at the scanner or a 3D lab or even the reading physician. The scanner uses built-in anatomy detection to create these images. I would suggest making sure you edit the ECG if necessary before starting these recons. More inline results options specific to cardiac scanning starting from the left to right are the VR model, the tree view model, and the short axis reformat. The option to create this reformat in multi-phase needs to be done manually, not in inline results. Depending on the type of scanner you are on, obtaining spectral reconstructions directly from the scanner has been done before in dual energy fast results. These recons are additional recons that can be set up in the protocol and appear only when IV contrast is used if you turn on the My Exam Companion feature. ECG editing options are still available. One thing we like about the ECG editing, editing is that the edited ECG strip follows the edited ECG recon. For example, if you have three recons, each with a different ECG edited strip, you can go back to recon one or two if after doing the third recon, you realize the first or second one was correct. This feature sure is a time saver because it gets the recons to the physician quicker. While the technologist and the physician do benefit from these features of Samaris 10, 
I think these features can offer even more benefit. I have alluded to a couple of them already. My exam satellite is a shared image database with the scanner. This gives others an opportunity to view the images and do simple post-processing while not without tying up the scan console. This workstation is something that we added onto our system and doesn't come standard. My exam companion, which include my exam compass and my exam cockpit, have greatly streamlined our protocol selection process. It's offered opportunities to decrease the number of our protocols in the scanner and consequently decreased the amount of time used to make a global change to our protocols. It has sped up the protocol selection process and decreased the likelihood of a protocol selection error at the same time. The physician protocols one exam. If it's a decision tree protocol, the technologist chooses the protocol from the scanner and then because of the parameters we have set up in my exam cockpit, the scan mode and or reconstructions are chosen for the technologist. My exam companion, which in include my exam compass and cockpit is, um, this, this technology that I was talking about is also available on Samara 7 software and uh, the trigger thresholds are set. Depending on the heart rate and variability, some scan and recon parameters are changed based on the scan mode used. The parameters needed to make my exam companion run correctly are entered into the exam designer. One my exam cockpit decision tree can be used for multiple protocols, and the same is true of the questions of the my exam compass. Samaris 10 offers physicians and technologists yet another efficiency using my exam companion. In our institution, we do not have dedicated cardiac technologists. Our technologists could be scanning a head, a lower extremity, coronary CTA, and a vascular exam in an hour. They rotate to multiple areas, work with various different personnel, and navigate different workflows. Introducing my exam companion can be a way to help out with the scanning portion of the equation. The physician reading the exam benefits from this feature too. I'll show you what I mean in the next few slides. Like the way, or like the, way the scan and go mobile workflow appears on the tablet, the technologist selects the body region where the protocol resides. Users have the flexibility to either scroll through the list of protocols on the right side of the screen or they can search by entering information into this research, or excuse me, into the search field above the adult child tabs. The available scan modes are listed for each protocol. So you know what is offered before you pick the protocol. Also, it shows the recons for the protocol. After the protocol is picked, the protocol shows up on the left side of the screen in the Chronicle. My exam compass questions are answered after the practice breath hold at the bedside or can be answered or modified at the scanner console. In the case of cardiac exams, the scan mode and reconstructions are decided by this breath hold. The scan mode determines the recons performed. The answers to the my exam compass questions cannot be changed after the acquisition. We have used a decision tree protocol mechanism to evaluate the scanner software features and develop our clinical protocols. Here are a few patient examples that show the use of my exam compass and my exam cockpit features. So here we have um, an 80 year old female to exclude MAC disease. The patient has a steady heart rate um, a steady heart rate variability and a low heart rate. So we chose the flash mode for this exam, or the, actually the, the My Exam Companion chose the flash mode. You can see that the image quality is really great on these images. Um, this one, let's see here, get my next slide. Um, so this one was a sequential mode. And this is a 56-year-old female for a pre-op evaluation of the mitral valve prolapse. This patient had a steady heart rate variability, but
but a moderate heart rate. So that's why it um, chose the sequence. And you could see, again, it looks like it's a similar image quality to the flash mode. So that's what you want um, the users to not have to worry about those kinds of things, the quality, and it helps the radiologist too. And here is another 80-year-old male post-TAVR evaluation for thrombus. This patient had high heart rate variability and a moderate heart rate. So this one was a spiral mode. So looking through this, you can actually see the, the, um, the TAVR, the valve in there. But again, similar image quality with all the three different scan modes. So at the end of the day, technologists and physicians agree that Samaras 10 features influence our daily experiences and give us opportunities for changes to the workflow. Ensuring the needs of the patient come first is still number one on our list of priorities. The features of Samaras 10 certainly offer an enhanced experience for all members of our team, including the patient. And these are some common themes that we heard throughout this, throughout this talk, the needs of the patient come first. We wanna create a calm environment for the patient during the exam. Safety, we're creating a safe environment for the patient and the technologist. Consistent and quality standardized images produced in an efficient manner. The images are of the highest quality due to protocols being streamlined and optimized. It offers mobility and flexibility, Many tasks can be performed in the room with the patient or at the console. So, you, you know, no matter where you're at or however your staffing model is, you know, you can adjust to that. And what's nice is that it's not just one way or the other. Reproducibility. Exams can be performed the same way using the workflow features. Confidence. The physician is confident in the technologist decision-making process given the right technological tools. The patient is confident because the technologist is confident. So Samaras 7 and Samaras 10 software for cardiac CT exams have differences and similarities. And there's no need to panic. This is an easy transition to the new software. The new software enhances the patient's technologists, and physicians' experiences and offers changes to workflows in different ways. The patient most benefits from the scan and go mobile workflow. The tech can be at the side of the patient throughout the exam, which creates that calm patient and, um, and offers them a, a way to communicate and, and be clear about everything that's going on throughout the exam. The technologist and the physician. I feel that uh, my exam companion and spectral recons coming off the scanner and the inline results are probably the best things that um, influence the technologist and the physicians, uh, their experience throughout this. The decision trees optimize the protocols in the selection, all recons performed at the scanner, and it increases efficiency and consistency of the post processing. So thank you for att your attention this evening. I'd also like to thank the Siemens Healthineers for sponsoring this event and thank the SCCT staff for their support as well. We will now have time for a live Q&A. Nikki, what a wonderful webinar and insight and presentation and insight to Samaras 10 and the innovative features that it delivers. I hope you and all the attendees have really enjoyed listening to, um, to Nikki speak um, during this webinar. And I hope you agree that the innovations that Samaras 10 have provided will really enhance the experience for the technologist, the patient, and the radiologist during a cardiac CT. Um, I need to mention that some of the features described by Nikki in her presentation, such as the MyExam satellite and fast 3D camera, are available as configurable options. Um, on the CT scanner. 
um, which we believe will further enhance the experience as Nikki has described. Now, Nikki, there's some questions from the audience um, and I'd like to just pose some of those to you now. Um, now that you've had some experience with Samaris 10, what advice would you want reiterated to you that perhaps you may not have realized or appreciated initially? Um, oh, one of the first things that I wish I would have probably been taught, um, and I you you catch on very quickly, is that the the orange dot will kind of guide you through the exams. And there's, you know, it tells you what your next step should be. So it guides you from when you pick the protocol and you need to say, OK, and then once you've picked the protocol, you know, it, it just kind of step by step shows you um, what your next step should be. The other thing that I think is is fantastic and, and um, we realized after we trained a few techs that, you know, we knew this, but we didn't tell the other technologists about it, and that is that. Um, where I showed how the, the reconstruction or the acquisition that's on the left in the Chronicle is the exact same color as down in the timeline, and then also the reconstruction parameters. So um, this is a key component that, that makes it very easy and streamlined to follow which recon you're on and make sure that you're inserting the right parameters and um, it makes, you know, makes things go smoother make sure that you're deleting the right uh, recon or moving things around. So, so that was probably something that, that was pointed out to us that we hadn't actually told everybody. We just assumed that everybody would see that and would know what it means. So. Excellent, well, great. Thank you, Nikki. And I guess that leads us on to another question on how easy or maybe how difficult has your technologist at your institution, you know, has it been to learn this new software? As you alluded to at the start, many of us are very familiar with our um, Samara 7 user interface, and I'm sure many of the attendees tonight are using that software, but may be faced with transitioning to Samara 10 on the Neotom Alpha or the Samara X platform or Go platform. How have your technologists you know, found that transition? Well, um, as I had said at the, the beginning, we were learning the photon counting scanner and the Samaris 10 software at the same time. So um, it might not be a fair comparison to how everybody's experience is going to be. But uh, I, I think overall, people are really embracing it. And, you know, one thing, having as many recons as we want to and not having to copy a recon and and paste it in there, you know, um, I think that is that's probably something that makes it a lot easier to to um, to get into this software. But I, I think overall, the techs have not had a, a difficult transition. And, you know, a lot of our techs are going back and forth. I have the luxury of staying at one area and I use this software all the time. So um, the ones, the texts that have to go back and forth, they seem to be able to transition back and um, kind of clicks, so. Absolutely. So Nikki, there's been a couple of questions from the audience about TAVRs. Can you share your TAVR protocol with, um, with us all um, today? Uh, so, so our TAVR protocol is to scan, but our, our hybrid TAVR is to scan the heart as a retrospective gated exam, and then do a flash of the chest abdomen pelvis. Um, we we have a lot of diff different iterations of that protocol. There's kind of the the full blown uh, top of the chest through the bottom of the heart retrospective gating, and then a separate abdomen pelvis CTA um, with the protocol with the contrast protocol being different between those two variations. There's even a a low dose like low IV contrast dose TAVR. Great, thank you. How does each of the decision trees, so my exam compass selections affect the scan parameters? Um, so you can set it up in the, in the cardiac world, you can set it up so that the, like in the flash mode, you can tell it what where to start your, um, what phase of the cardiac cycle you want your exam to start at or where you want your acquisition to start at. 
and then uh, the sequence and spiral. So the pulsing window can be changed. The reconstructions that you want it to use, obviously you can't do a multi-phase reconstruction when you have a flash mode. So that recon will disappear when it's when the flash mode is chosen. Um, some of the other you can you can change the the um, the breath hold. So maybe if you're doing a flash mode, you want it you want the patient to have take a breath in and hold it, and then wait for a few seconds, and then acquire your images, kind of to let the heart rate settle down. Uh, versus maybe in the in the routine mode, you just want them to take a breath and hold it. Um, right. I well, I think. We can always, if anybody in the audience would like additional information about anything related to the clinical decision trees or my exam compass, cockpit, we'd be very happy to, to, to answer those um, you know, offline. Um, I do have another question. Um, somebody would like to know if they're understanding correctly that there's a difference in how you choose the cardiac scan mode. On their current scanner, they choose prospective or retrospective in advance. Is this different now with the new software? Yeah, if you choose to use the, the My Exam Compass, that you can, based on the patient's heart rate variability and their heart rate, the scanner actually chooses the scan mode for you. So um, where you normally would say you pick the, the uh, flash mode and realize that the patient's heart rate isn't conducive to that scan mode, you would have to go back out to your protocol um, protocol model dialog box and pick the separate protocol. Uh, in this software, it picks that scan mode for you and then adjusts your reconstruction parameters or anything else like what we had just alluded to, so. Fantastic. And now, you know, somebody has asked, they've been hearing lots about photon counting CT and you're, you know, they know that this is a workflow talk, um, but you're very lucky to be working on a photon counting scanner. Um, what's been your impression of the photon counting CT for cardiac? Um, our physicians, radiologists, cardiologists, the ordering clinicians are going wild about it, um, <laughs> to, to say the least. Um, if they could, so we share the we share amongst many div divisions our clinical uh, alpha protocol or uh, alpha scanner is in a, in a shared area. So if our physicians had it their way, we would have every cardiac exam done on the photon counting scanner. But um, as it is, we have to share in the sandbox. So <laughs> I guess a question for me on that point, you know, what is it about the images that your physicians get so excited about when it comes to the cardiac images of the, the, the Neotron Alpha system? Um, you know, I think the, the higher spatial resolution, the ability to see small calcium in the vessel is, mm -hmm. you know, is very helpful for them. You know, it makes it easier to, to tell confidently, yes, this vessel is stenosed or no, this is, um, you know, this is hard plaque or this is soft plaque. Some of those things, uh, it's been very very um, easy for them to see that and they're excited about it. We were also excited about the uh, multi-energy exams. So again, on the other scanners, not to, not to be comparing, those scanners are, are great and we use them we, and, and love them, but um, this scanner option, you can use a multi-energy exam for, um, for your cardiacs and look at the, the muscle of the heart, so. Sounds very exciting. And back to kind of workflow and, and, you know, somebody has asked that you've said unlimited recons. <laughs> Does that affect workflow or reconstruction time? Uh, both. So, so one benefit that having unlimited reconstructions is, is going to, number one, we can set up all of the recons that, that are required. I believe in our TAVR recon, uh, the TAVR chest, there might be nine different recons that we have. So if you only had to do, if you had eight, the technologist has to add on that recon 
And then we are hoping that they follow the protocol and type in the series description. And if there's any parameters that they need to change, you know, the slice thickness or spacing or whatever, you know, that, that takes time when you have people around you asking questions and you're trying to hurry up and get the next exam going. And, um, and so having the unlimited reconstructions, I, it definitely helps the, the workflow. And, you know, I, I feel like it builds confidence with the technologists and, you know, they're not um, worried that they forgot something. And, you know, so that, that definitely comes across to the patient too, when you're confident in your protocols and confident in the scanner and, um, and that will translate to the patients and at their bedside. Obviously, so. okay, post-processing doesn't add any additional burden of time in terms of reconstruction. So your reader, your physicians are happier, I'm guessing, because they've got those packs ready to read images in a more timely fashion as well. So it's a win for the patient, it's a win for you, and it's a win for the physician. So everybody goes home happy. Exactly. Yeah, you don't forget. You don't forget to do one. You know, if it's five o'clock, you left, and the radiologist is trying to read the exam. After that, they they don't have to look and try to find somebody to make that reconstruction job. So, absolutely. And I think for for those of us within the audience that are using Samara Seven systems, perhaps it's a summer course or a drive. You know, some good news on the reconstructions coming with the next generation of software that were available, you know, for, for that system. There will be an increase of the reconstruction, reconstruction jobs available up to 18 with the next generation of software. So I think, Nikki, we've probably bombarded you with lots of questions tonight. I think um, we, you have got a slide with mine and my colleague, Matt Bowles, who is the director of photo and counting, CT, our email addresses. If anybody... Um, watching is interested and needs any more information and follow up please don't hesitate to reach out to us but thank you all so much for your attention and joining us on, on the webinar today and um, please you know stay safe look after it um, yourself and this uh, webinar will be recorded and available for viewing after the event at your leisure many thanks and Nikki thank you again for your time thank you you're welcome